Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to cover a really important topic when first learning Swift. And that important topic is called conditionals. Now, I love conditionals. I think they're so much fun to work with and they just make so much sense, but they can be tricky to get started working with. But once you get them, I am confident that you will love them as well. So we're continuing on in our Swift Basics Fun project. Let's make a new marked section in our file, our main.swift file, and let's call this section optionals, optionals. All right, so what is an optional? Well, an optional is kind of like Schrodinger's cat. If you know about Schrodinger's cat, the basic idea is you have this box and you know there's a cat inside the box, but you don't know if the cat is alive or dead until you open up the box and you look inside. Once you look inside, you'll know if the cat's alive or dead, right? Well, optionals are just like that, okay? You have a variable and it may store a value or it may not store a value. You don't know until you unwrap the optional, which means until you look inside the optional, the variable and see if there's a value there or not. All right, so I'm gonna write a definition for an optional. And I think it's a really important definition that you commit to your memory so that whenever you're working with optionals and you get confused, you can always just fall back on it. It's very similar to when you first learn about pointers in C and C++. There's a very simple definition of a pointer. It's a variable that stores as its contents the address of another variable. And if you can just remember that over and over again, then every time you work with pointers, it can be easier to decipher what's going on. The same thing with optionals. I highly encourage you to commit this definition to memory. An optional is a variable, okay? So nothing too crazy, nothing different than we worked with so far. That can either be nil or store a value. And nil is the Swift keyword that represents null or nothing or no value, okay? So remember shorting your scat, okay? You look inside the optional, there's either not going to be a value or there is going to be a value. So let's take a look at declaring an optional in Swift. All right, we'll have a variable and I'm gonna be very explicit in my variable names to help you learning optionals. All right, so I'm gonna call this my optional int, my optional int, okay? Its type is going to be int optional and I'm going to initialize it to nil. So let me break this down. My variable name is called my optional int. Its type is int question mark. And this question mark, when you see this, should imply optional, okay? I'm initializing this variable of type optional int to nil, which means back to the Schrodinger cat example, the cat is dead, okay? In this case, there's nothing inside this variable. There's no value. I'm not initializing it to anything. Well, why would I do something like this? If I want to store an int, why not just declare an int like this and initialize it to say negative one? Why not do that? Well, here's an example why. We often need to initialize a variable to a dummy value that's not valid in the range of possible values that could be stored in the variable. Like for example, negative one. Let's say we're storing an index, right? An index into an array or a string, and we don't actually have a value for that index yet. So to denote that the current value in this index variable is invalid, we would store negative one in it. Okay, we can just check in our code if the index value equals negative one. Okay, we need to probably prompt the user for an index or go retrieve it somewhere. Or maybe this means that the array or the string is empty. Okay, that works for this example, but what if the possible range of values that could be stored in this integer variable includes all positive, negative numbers and zero? The negative one wouldn't be a valid dummy value to use to initialize the variable. In fact, in that case, there isn't a valid dummy value that you could use because all values in the range, say, you know, negative 100 to 100 or whatnot would be valid. So what do you use? Well, you can use an optional, right? Initialize that integer variable to store nil. And then when you do get a valid integer value, 
you can overwrite nil with that value. And then you can just check. If there is a value in the optional, then it's safe to use that value. If not, then you need to get a value, perhaps by prompting the user or perhaps by grabbing it uh, from some other data source or by filling it up somehow. All right, well, hopefully that's a little bit of motivation for optionals. You're gonna see them all over in Swift. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna show you an example just at the end of this video of how you have to use optional, optionals uh, to start getting some user input, right, from console. So they're very much used frequently in Swift, especially when we get to iOS programming, you're gonna see optionals used quite a bit. All right, enough talking about optionals, let's start working with them. All right, Schrodinger's cat, right? We gotta open the box. Is there a live cat or a dead cat in here? Optionals, we've gotta open up, we've gotta unwrap and look inside the variable and see if there's a value or not. So how do you do this? Well, to find out if an optional has a value or not, you need to unwrap it. And I'm gonna put unwrap in quotes because it's a new term, a new Swifty term. So how do you unwrap an optional? Well, there are two ways to unwrap an optional. One is not the preferred way. The other is the preferred way. Let me show you the unpreferred way first. That's called force unwrapping. And just by the name force, you can probably figure this is not the preferred approach. Anytime you have to force something, that's probably not best practice. I'm gonna write that it's not best practice because it's unsafe. And I'll give you an example of this. So right now we have my optional int, okay? It is of type int optional and it's initialized to nil. There's nothing in there. I'm gonna force unwrap my optional int. To force unwrap, you simply put an exclamation mark at the end of your variable name and this will force unwrap. I'm gonna run this and oh my gosh, my program crashes. What does it crash with? I've got this error, unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional. That makes sense, right? <laughs> I initialize this optional to nil. So if I force unwrap and try and get the value out of an optional, but there is no optional, in fact, it's nil, it's gonna crash my program. It's very similar to like a null pointer exception in Java um, or a seg fault in C, C++. So this is bad practice, right? I should check first. It's almost like peeking into the box before I actually look into the box. This exclamation mark, you'll see it in Swift. If you're gonna use the exclamation mark, you better know what you're doing, okay? Because you're essentially telling the compiler, what I'm about to do probably isn't safe, but do it anyway. So use this exclamation mark with caution. Use it with caution. Now, let's say I do actually put in a value in my optional int. Say I put in 10. This isn't gonna crash my program because there actually is a value to grab out from there. So let me comment that out this code too. Okay, this is going to crash your program if nil. All right, let's move on to option number two. This is called optional binding, and this is the preferred approach. Okay, so remember how I just said that it's best to kind of peek in the box before fully committing to opening the box and trying checking on the cat or in our case, trying to grab a value out of an optional. So that's what we're gonna do. If there is a value in the optional, okay, so we're gonna have an if statement, assign it to a temporary variable and use that variable safely. So we're effectively gonna use an if statement to find out if there is a value inside, and if there is, we'll assign that value to a temporary value to a temporary variable that's not an optional that we can use safely. So here's the syntax: if if let my int be assigned my optional int, then I'm going to print out my int because in here I can now safely use my int. So just to kind of recap what's going on here. 
Recall that let is a keyword used to declare a constant variable. Okay, so if I declare a constant variable inside of my Boolean condition of an if statement, then essentially I'm declaring a local variable that only has scope inside of this Boolean condition and if statement body. So if my optional int is not nil, then this Boolean condition will evaluate to true, assigning that value in the optional to an integer variable. If I option click on here, it's an integer variable. And I can safely use that integer variable via my int inside the body of this if statement. So let me run this. Okay, I don't see any print statement because what is the value of my optional int? It is nil, so this is failing. Let's try changing my optional int to store, say, 20. Now my optional int doesn't store nil, so this will evaluate to true, assigning 20 to my int, in which case on line 122, I print out my int and I see 20. All right, perfect. So this is just a brief little example of how optional binding works. A few ways to elaborate on optional binding beyond this basic example. I might wanna do something in an else statement if this fails, right? So if I'm here, I know that my optional int is nil and I might want to do something about it. So for now, I'll just simply print out my optional int is nil but you might want to go fetch a value from the user or something's maybe wrong, you're in an error state and you need to do some fixing. All right, another way to elaborate an optional binding is with the guard let statement. The guard let statement is really neat and I'm gonna explain the guard let statement in a different video. Uh, but just know if you come across something like a if let but it says guard let, it is slightly different than an if let, but it's often used with optionals as well. All right, before we do a little example here, I wanna add a word of caution, which is uh, don't use this. It's very tempting to think, well, I don't really like this weird if let syntax. Instead, I'll just check to see if the optional is not equal to nil, and then if it is, I will force unwrap it. So that would be something like, if my optional int is not equal to nil, then in here, I will force unwrap my optional int. So maybe something like var my int two is assigned my optional int exclamation mark, okay? This code is going to uh, compile. It's not gonna have a uh, runtime error like we saw earlier up here on option number one, but this is not best practice and you shouldn't do this. Okay, the whole reason why we use the if let part of optional binding is so that we have cleaner syntax than this and we avoid ever force unwrapping because this is such an unsafe practice. So my advice is don't do this, don't be tempted to do this. Take the time, learn the syntax and understand optional binding with if lets and guard lets. Much better approach. All right, so time for an example of optionals in the wild, just so you can see, well, gosh, why would I ever use an optional? Here is a really great example. All right, so let's say we wanna prompt the user for a value. So we're gonna be getting some input from keyboard via the console or the terminal, which is not how you would get input from the user if you were making an iOS app, but it is how you would get input from the user if you're making a command line app like we are as we just begin to learn Swift. So there's a really nice uh, function in Swift called readline. And if you do command shift zero, it'll bring you to the documentation where you can search for readline. I already have it pulled up and learn about it. So let's take a look at the documentation for readline. Returns a string read from standard input through the end of the current line or until EOF end of file is reached. Okay, here's the declaration for it. In a future video, we're gonna learn about functions in Swift, 
but I can just give you a brief overview. Uh, here's your parameter list. Looks like there's one parameter called stripping new line of type bool and its default value is true. And then this arrow denotes the beginning of the list of return types. So the return type here is string question mark, which we now know is an optional string. Return value, the string of characters read from standard input. If you have has already been reached when read line is called, the result is nil. Okay, so we could get nil back from this function or we could get a string, which means we're gonna get a string optional. It's our responsibility as the caller of read line to unwrap the return value and see, is there really a value here? If so, let's safely use it. If not, something went wrong, something failed, we do not have a value here. So this is much better than you know some other programming languages where you might just get the empty string back or you might have to have a try catch around your code or you might have to check the character count or check the stream for uh, error state or a negative one status code. This is just a really elegant solution to trying something that might fail, but still returning that information about success or failure, and if success, the value in a single return value. All right, let's try it out. All right, so over here, let's have a print statement and let's say something like, please enter your favorite season. Summer's about to end and summer is my favorite season, so I'm trying to hold on as much as I can to the summer good times. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to declare a constant called optional input string, okay? I'm just being very, very explicit that when we work with this variable, we gotta remember it is an optional. It is an optional. We'll call read line, okay? Which if I option click on it, I'll see the documentation. Remember it's returning this string optional right here. Now I've got to check if let input string, okay, I'm going to take off that optional part once I've successfully unwrapped it, can be assigned optional input string. So I'm going to use optional binding. Then I can print something like, let's do input string is my favorite season too. Just something kind of fun. Let's try it. All right, it's prompting me, please enter your favorite season. I enter in summer, and then it says summer is my favorite season too. Fantastic, so we were able to successfully unwrap using optional binding, a string optional return from read line. Now let's say I run this again, and this time I don't enter in anything, okay? So I still do get the empty string inserted in my output, okay? So read line is going to return an empty string, okay? It's not gonna return nil if the user doesn't enter anything in. That's good to know. Now, a reason why you might get nil here is if for some reason uh, the standard input file descriptor has been closed, right? In which case you're not able to get any input. Um, and you reach EOF end of file on that file descriptor. So if something goes wrong, then this would fail because there wouldn't actually be a value in optional string, optional input string, it would be nil, okay? But that would be the case of an error. The user not entering anything and then pressing enter is not an error. They've just given you zero characters as their response to the question. So that's something else that you would need to check for. All right, so that's the end of the video introducing optionals. I just wanna reiterate one more time the importance of getting comfortable with the definition of an optional. It's a variable that can be either nil or store a value. You've gotta unwrap the optional to find out if there is a value and then use something like optional binding in order to safely use that value. Try to avoid using force and wrapping it is not considered the best practice. And look for those question marks as you start to explore Swift. You're gonna start seeing them pop up all over the place, um, even in places beyond just declaring a type, okay? You'll also see question marks on initializers, 
Okay, those are like constructors uh, for things like structs and classes. You'll also see them on try, okay? You're gonna try some code that might fail. Uh, they're really, really important in Swift and they're really neat. And I hope after this video, you are as excited to use them as I am. Thanks for watching.